Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode of my Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Um, we're actually gonna, today is a big day, we're gonna be actually show you how the, the DevBox deployment works. Um, and it's not in your traditional sort of the administrator has to do it, the actual developer does it themselves. So we're gonna show how we do that in, in the demo. Um, but yeah, we've been working through DevBox. We're almost, we've got a couple more episodes after this um, on the DevBox topic. Then we're gonna be moving on to Windows 365. So very excited about that. Um, and it's, yeah, I've, I've learned a lot personally from, from doing DevBox. You know, I've done a couple of production deployments already within my work. And I, I personally, I think it's a really, really good service and solution. Um, big, big fan of it. And I've had really good positive feedback from people as well. Um, we, we, you know, we, we will do some more DevBox content towards the end, but I want to show the integrations with things like Nergy and Control and stuff like that towards, and that'll be a general sort of a VDI thing, Microsoft Cloud, not just DevBox. Um, so without further ado, let's get started with this episode. Uh, so this is the uh, Microsoft VDI series, as I mentioned. And believe it or not, this is actually uh, episode 10, which is which is ridiculously amazing. Um, so t today is going to be the uh, part three of the RBAC for Microsoft DevBox. RBAC is obviously Microsoft. Uh, this is a robust access control for Microsoft. And we'll look at, talk about, so we did it for platform engineers in the last episode. We're going to talk about dev manager role and developer role. And we'll go back into the, the, the demo. Um, so we're going to go back to this uh, this diagram here, but it's a bit different, as you can see. For a dev manager specifically, their permissions are at that project level, so they're more of the project admin. We saw in the last video where we showed this um, diagram, we, the, the owner and contributor role was at the resource group level for the platform engineer, but with this, it's the project admin who, who, is, the, who is essentially the dev manager. That's their role, and they need to be assigned at that project um, sort of uh, level rather than the resource group level. So when it comes to uh, the dev manager role, um, you know, there's one dev manager, there's, there's one dev manager role, which is a dev, uh, dev center project admin, that's the actual uh, role within Azure. And this role is more, it's got more restricted permissions, really. Um, you know, it's more restricted permissions and a sort of lower level scope, as those we've seen, than that sort of platform engineer role. And you assign the role to dev managers to enable them to perform administrative tasks for their for their team, and that includes sort of assigning dev center, you know, assign, you know, adding, synchronizing, and uh, removing catalogs. And this is a project level catalogs, and these must be enabled on the dev center, FYI. Also, creating dev box pools as well, but also being able to stop, start, and delete dev boxes in pools as and when they need. We then have we're going to, you know the, the the developer sort of um, role as well as I mentioned they have a role to play in this and there's this one developer role which is that dev box user and, and this role enables developers to create and manage their own dev boxes and again um, that permission is actually at the project level as well um, because to be able to provision a dev box pool that is within the project so we have that permission but you see it's not it's not that management role it's more of a it's a user it says it in the in the it's a user role right. So they only have uh, permissions, certain permissions, not not a lot to be fair, but it's just for what they need to do. So that that dev box user role, you know, you assign that to, to the user to give them or the developer to give them permissions to have full control of their specific dev box that they've created. So that's very key. Don't have permission of anyone else's dev box they've created their own only. And developers can perform multiple actions on the dev box they create, they can create, they can start, stop, they can restart, they can delay schedule shutdowns and also delete their own dev box as well. Okay, uh, so a bit of a short uh, episode there. I want to jump back in, I actually want to focus more on the demo if I'm honest um, today. So we're going to jump in the demo, we're actually going to see how we prov how a developer, uh, which I'm going, to, I'm going to play the developer today, uh, provisions their own dev box. So please join me in the demo. So here we are, we're back in my demo poll. However, as a as a as a developer, when so we, we we've done the we've created the all the different definitions, we've created the project, we've created the pools, uh, everyone's got the permissions they need. So now it's time to actually provision that dev box. And this is what the the developer themselves does. So the actual it's all it's all done through HTML5, uh, or you can uh, you can access it through um, the actual uh, once you've once you've done this uh, deployment to, to, to provision it, you can then manage it through or you can access it through um, the Windows app, which I'll I'll, I'll show as well. Um, but here we we we're on uh, devbox.microsoft.com as you can see. And what we need to do here is just sign in. Okay, um, and hopefully this sees 
Uh, yep, so at the moment I've got no resources created, right? Because it's the first time I'm doing it. What we should do is to add that dev box. So here's where I can put in the name of my dev box. Shabs dev box. Uh, can I contain alphanumeric and no spaces? And it tell, straight away there, it tells me what the project is because it's found it. At the moment, there's zero of one. So if you remember when we first provisioned the um, dev box, we did it so each developer can only put one dev box in. So it's again, it already it's picked that up. And again, with our definition, we chose the uh, 8 CP VCPU and 32 gig RAM definition. So straight away, that's what's going to provision for me, okay? And we configured Hibernate support as well. Uh, and we, you know, we want to apply any customizations, we can do that. Essentially here, we just click continue. Um, and then again, we can choose from the file repository, or we can upload a customization file if we wanted to. Um, so sorry, let me just untick apply customizations. Then what we'll do is we'll click on create. Now that's going to go and create my dev box now for me to log into. Now this can take um, a while the first time you do it, obviously because we're provisioning the VM, right? So that's just one thing we need to be wary of. Um, so I'm not going to show this screen and, and show you. What I'll do is in the next uh, demo that I do in the next episode, we'll actually come back in and we'll actually log into it. Um, so that's just, I want to shine to show you how the developer, so I am the developer, how I can provision that. Um, so we are going to leave that provisioning. I'm not going to show you that because it can take up to about 20, 20, 30 minutes, depending on, um, depending on how long it's, how it's going to take, really. It's an, as is a law to itself, right? <laughs> we don't control how it takes them to print stuff. Um, so yeah, just want to, so hopefully that's, uh, we've kind of come towards that, towards the end now of that demo sort of stuff. So I think we might have the odd episode towards the end of this topic where we don't have any demos. Um, but again, we, we've covered a lot within the RBAC, you know, the role based access control, the different, different sort of stakeholders with, you know, the, the actual, uh, platform engineers, the IT admin, essentially the development manager and the developer themselves. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Please do leave me any comments, you know, make sure you like my videos, make sure you want, you know, subscribe, hit that subscribe button. You know, I'm, I'm on my next journey now, you know, I've, I've hit 20 K and I'm kind of building now to, uh, I suppose my, my next, I don't want to go up in tens if I'm honest. I'm going to, I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and aim for 50. That's my next one. 50 K before the end of 2025, 2025, right? So let's see if we can do that. And um, hopefully people are getting involved with the giveaway as well. I've got 10 t-shirts with my sort of logo, which I've shown already. I think I showed it on my, my social media post. So please do join in with that, get signed up, and then we'll do a live giveaway. Uh, and I'll send you those through the post. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.